Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Gepra Sea Crocodile Baby, a micro long range 4 inch quadcopter. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, give you my initial feedback after testing it out and show you some flight footage. On upcoming videos, which should be up in the next two weeks, I'm going to test it with an onboard naked GoPro camera, perform a long range test and an endurance test using a lithium ion forest battery pack and compare it with the current available micro long range quadcopters. First of all, in terms of packaging, inside the box along with the quadcopter you can find two sheets of stickers, two sets of Gemfan 4024 bio-bladed propellers, a bag with eight foam landing pads, two spare 2mm screws for securing the propellers, two plastic tubes and rubber covers for protecting the antennas of a radio receiver, a hex key driver, three battery velcro straps, one which you can use in the center of the quadcopter and an extra two which you can use using these cutouts. Finally, inside the package you can also find two extra carbon fiber arms which is a blast add-on. In terms of specs, the GEPRC Crocodile Baby features 1404 2750 kV motors which can handle up to 4S batteries when pushing 4-inch propellers. On the center of the quadcopter you can find the GEP20A A4 an all-in-one F4 flight controller that came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.2.3 and features an integrated 20 ampere BLLES 4-in-1 ESC. On top of it, in case you have the HD version mounted to the top plate, you can find the Cadex Vista digital transmission unit and on the front, protected using a provided 3D printed TPU part, you can find the DJI camera or the Cadex Nebula V2 camera depending on the version that you've got. In addition, along with the quadcopter, you're getting an Immortal T 3D printed mount which you can mount underneath the camera. The battery is going to be mounted on the top plate and this quadcopter is using an XT30 battery connector. A 25 volt 330 microfarad capacitor is pre-soldered to the battery pads. And finally, on the back of the quadcopter, you can find a 3D printed TPU part that accommodates a GPS unit the Gepper C Super Buzzer, which is a self-powered buzzer with an integrated LED unit that can help you to recover the quadcopter in case of a crash, and a 10 cm long LHCP antenna. As for the frame, which is by the way available separately, its wheelbase is 174mm. It features a dead cat pattern, so the propellers are not going to be in your FPV feed. The thickness of each replaceable carbon fiber arm is 2.5mm and its width is 7.7mm. The thickness of the bottom plate is 2mm and the thickness of the top plate is 1.5mm. The distance between them is 25.3mm. On the bottom plate you can find 20x20 20 20 and whoop style 25.1x25.1mm mounting holes and on the top plate you can find two 20x20mm mounting holes. Finally, the weight of the Crocodile Baby without a battery velcro strap and a battery is 161.3g so it's a little bit heavier than the Flyway Explorer and lighter than the iFlight Chimera 4. Now by the way, you should note that the Gepro C Crocodile Baby is available in a couple of versions. First of all, you can get a version that doesn't come with an FV system, which is the version that I initially got, and I have a separate video that shows how to add and configure the Cadex Vista Digital Transmission Unit and the TBS Crossfire Nano SE Receiver. In addition, you can get DJI HD versions that come with the Cadex Vista system and the DJI or Nebula V2 camera and analog versions that are available with either Cadex Rotel or Tarzir V2 HD recording camera. All the versions are available with multiple radio receiver options or you can get plug and play versions in case you would like to add your own radio receiver or use a DJI radio controller. In order to set up the Crocodile Baby, first in case you have the DJI HD version, Activate the Cadex Vista, update it to the latest available version, and bind it with your DJI goggles. Then in case you need to, add a radio receiver, or bind the existing one with your radio controller. The next step is to connect the flight controller to your computer or mobile device using its micro USB port. Open a bit of flight, and hit connect. Here you can see how the port section is configured. First of all, the configuration slash MSP switch is enabled on UART1, which is connected to the Cadex Vista system, in order to display the telemetry data on your OSD and read the drone battery voltage. The serial RX switch is enabled on your 2 which is connected to the radio receiver, and the GPS is enabled on soft serial 1. When testing it out, I didn't encounter any problems with the GPS, and I also didn't experience the issue of the OSD flickering like I had with the Flyway Explorer. Next, here you can see the configuration setup. 
The GPS is of course enabled and the protocol is set to U-Blocks. The power and battery settings are the default settings of the flight controller and as you can see the amperage meter is not accurate so don't count on it. Here you can see the PID tuning and I'm going to leave a link down below to the dump settings so in case you adjusted something and you would like to revert to the original settings you can use it. Under the receiver tab you should make sure that all the switches and sticks of your radio receiver are working properly. Then define your favorite flight modes and OSD elements. Now by the way on one of my recent videos I told you that it doesn't make any sense to display the GPS coordinates on the OSD of the DJI goggles because you can't record it and actually I was wrong because Albert Kim recently released a video where he showed that it actually does matter because even when you lose connectivity with your goggles you can still see the last image where the DJI coordinates are displayed by pressing any of the buttons of the goggles so this data is actually very useful. Finally, in order to adjust the failsafe options, you should enable expert mode. Then head over to the failsafe tab, and you should note that by default, the GPS rescue option is enabled, and I recommend that for the first time that you are testing the crocodile baby, set it to drop, and after assigning the GPS rescue to a switch, which is something that anyway I recommend to do, test it out, make sure that it is working well, and only then set the failsafe option to GPS rescue, of course depending on the environment that you're flying in and the type of your flight. It is also important to make sure that the alarm arming without fixed switch is disabled before attempting a long range flight, as otherwise the return to home feature might not be available. As for the self-powered buzzer, each time that you are going to unplug a battery, the buzzer is going to be armed, and in order to disarm it, simply press this button. In case you are not going to manually disarm the buzzer, for example in case of a crash, the buzzer is going to start beeping in the following pattern at close to 100 decibels and the LED unit is going to start flashing which will hopefully help you to recover the quadcopter at night. In addition, when the drone battery is plugged, the buzzer is going to act like a normal buzzer which you can control using an auxiliary switch and as far as I know, its connected battery should last for at least 5 or 6 hours. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Gaper C Crocodile Baby using 650 and 850 4S LiPo batteries. The expected flight time using the 650mAh 4S battery, which is probably one of your best options in case you need to stay below 250 grams, is between 6 to 8 minutes, and using the bigger 850mAh 4S battery should provide you with between 8 to 11 minutes of flight time, of course depending on how you fly. In order to achieve extra long flight times, which should be between 25 to 30 minutes, you can use a 4S lithium ion battery pack, and as I mentioned before, soon I'm going to perform an endurance test. In terms of flying characteristics, you probably wouldn't be surprised that the Crocodile Baby is very similar to the Flyway Explorer, since it shows with it very similar specs, and you can expect cruising at about 60 km per hour at 50% throttle when flying it in very mild winds. Finally, in terms of build quality and components, I think that Gepper C have done an excellent job and it is great that they included two extra arms in the kit, however, my only complaint is that the motor wires should have been longer, as these ones, for example, are too short and can be pulled off in case of a crash. So overall, the Gepper C Crocodile Baby is definitely an option to consider in case you are in the market for a new micro long range 4 inch HD or analog drone, and stay tuned for my upcoming video where I'm going to compare it with the other two micro long range quadcopters after I'm going to put it through more tests. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage and as always if you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.